Hello, this is Sunil Manji, Director of Solution Engineering at Kinetica. The objective of this video is to provide a brief tutorial on the new Kinetica Spark Connector. The purpose of the Spark Connector is to perform massively parallel ingest into Kinetica using Spark's data frame as a first class citizen. In all interactions between Spark and Kinetica during ingest are through an API for ultimate ease of use. The features of the Spark Connector that's open source and fully extendable. Source code is available on Kinetica's GitHub page, downloadable and extend as you wish. Also available as an API jar, available on S3. Simply download the jar and start interacting with the connector. We'll be doing this in this tutorial. It's built for Spark 2.x and 1.5, for this tutorial, we'll be focusing on Spark 2.x, specifically for 2.2.0. The connector creates a table from Spark data frame and creates the corresponding data types in Kinetica, right-sizing the columns as you go. For example, for string columns, the connector will do a map over partition, find the max length on a given column, and create a char n field for that column in Kinetica. It is the same thing for numeric fields. Additionally, it also creates shard keys, primary keys, and other subtypes available in Kinetica. All of those are available through a simple API call. For example, to create a primary key, simply call create primary key in the API and provide your column or columns. When the table is created, it will use the columns you've specified. Same happens for all the subtypes. Lastly, high-speed ingest. Recently, we observed roughly three to four billion inserts per minute on a small Connecticut cluster. Before we dive into the demo, let's quickly talk about the architecture. A Spark data frame consists of one to many partitions. Within the connector, each partition will instantiate a bulk inserter object. The bulk inserter object is a core type Connecticut, essentially providing the baseline for massively parallel ingest. We advocate between one to two minimum million records per Spark partition. If the Spark data frame is not uniformly distri distributed, we advocate to repartition for uniform distribution for best performance. Some of the resources available is a connector doc basically a mimic of this video on paper. The Java doc to provide you all the interfa interface information, connector for available for download, and for this tutorial, we'll be using the Airline 2008 data set. Let's jump into the demo. This is the Kinetica admin UI. We will go to the data tab, tables, the master collection, View the tables within the master collection. As you can see, the airline table does not exist. The connector will ingest data and create the table on the fly. Let's go to the Spark shell. Prior to launching the Spark shell, we need to download the Spark connector and the 2008 airline data set. As you can see, we have both files. Let's launch Spark Shell using the connector. We are now in Spark Shell inside of Spark Session. Let's import the connector libraries, com, Kinetica, Spark. Let's import all of them, all the libraries. And now we want to create a Spark data frame from the 2008 airline data set. The data, set, the data frame has been created. Let's take a look at it. As you can see, there's data with inside the data frame. Next step is to create a loader parms object. The loader parms object is essential for the Spark connector. It tells the Spark connector where the target kinetic instance is, the JDBC, URL, the table name, and other additional attributes. All the attribute information is inside the Java doc. Here, I'll create 
an instance of loader parm using the overloaded uh, uh, constructor and here's all the parameters. You can set individual attributes by calling lp.methodName, so lp.setTableName, lp.setNumberOfThreads. That's also available. Here I take the short form using the constructor and providing all the values. Now you're ready to ingest. But prior to ingesting, I want to set some additional metadata fields, for example, setting the primary key. So here, I set the primary key if when the table is created inside of Connecticut using the connector. The primary key will be set to year and flight number. And I also want to set a few fields and their compression types. So for example, I set airtime to snappy and carrier delay to LZ4. And now we're ready to ingest. We'll simply call the Connecticut writer using the data frame and the loader parms object. And that's it. Let's go to the Connecticut admin UI to see our new table and data. Again, back at the Connecticut admin UI, going to the data tab, tables, the master collection, we can see our newly created table. Here we ingested 100,000 records rapidly. You can see here 2,669 records exist. That is because we set the primary key so updates will perform during the ingest uh, based on that unique identifier. So the 100,000 records were compressed into 2,699. To recap, we reviewed the features of the Spark connector, the architecture of how a data frame is used for massively parallel ingestion into Connecticut, resources available to you, for example, where to find the new connector jar and sample data, and lastly, a demo of actually how to use the Spark connector. We hope this tutorial has given you a good understanding of how to ingest data at speed and scale from Spark. For more information, take a look at the Spark chapter in our documentation. And if you have questions, you can post in the Connecticut forum. Thank you.